welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Ed Gamble, Kerry Godleyman and Glenn Moore, Milton Jones, Hugh Dennis and Rachel Paris. We start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> is this uh, when your dealer's around the corner and you just can't wait? <laughs> In that picture, he is putting his left leg in, so I'm fairly sure he's doing the hokey cokey. <laughs> <laughs> you thinking, I've just got to get home before the condom disintegrates. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this has got anything to do with drugs. I think this is ventriloquist's dummy on run after escaping from suitcase. <laughs> uh, I'd be running scared as well if I was being chased by an invisible cyclist. <laughs> 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 Is it part of a regular race that he runs with other people around the Monopoly board site in London? <laughs> and uh, you get £200 if you pass Gove. <laughs> <laughs> that is the face of a man who's waited in all day and then there's a sorry we missed you slip on the map. <laughs> <laughs> I can run forever, me. I can run forever. I can run forever, me. <laughs> I can run forever. <laughs> Has he got a sponsorship deal with Adidas where they pay him to not wear their clothes? <laughs> Is it Michael Gove misunderstanding when someone said there was a crack in the pavement? <laughs> oh, beautiful. And the other answer is? <laughs> this. Yes. I believe, Dara. Yes. Is Michael Gove? It is. Thank you very much, <laughs> <Cheers>, Michael Gove. <laughs> yes, this is Environment Secretary and Conservative Leadership candidate Michael Gove enjoying a jog. This week, <laughs> his leadership campaign ran into difficulty after he admitted to taking cocaine on several occasions whilst working as a journalist in the 1990s. He went on to describe his actions as a mistake. I find it inspiring. OK. I, I think if someone that <laughs> stiff and posh-sounding who wears glasses can kick that coke habit, then so can I. <laughs> <laughs> not enough people are looking at it as an inspiring story, really. None of people are seeing the positive No, I, I can understand the disappointment, because, I mean, he started that campaign of clean for the Queen, and I thought he was clean for the Queen, but it turns out he was just polluted for the suited and booted, and I find that gun... <laughs> I think it's quite clever what he's doing. He's basically making illegal drugs uncool one by one. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he doesn't done coke. Now no one's ever going to do coke ever again. Yeah. Yeah. If he said he stabbed someone in the 90s, we could end knife crime. <laughs> he had a great time in ISIS. He loved his time in ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming back right it now. Made him the man he is. It made him the man he is, ISIS. <laughs> He might look unlikely, but I'm sure this is going to escalate. I reckon by the time this is broadcast, he will have been revealed as H. <laughs> <laughs> from steps. Oh, yeah. yeah, from steps, yeah. <laughs> his flatmate was very shocked, wasn't he, when he found out about it? Because he was like, I don't know where he's fit it in because he had a busy lifestyle. When did he fit in a coke habit? <laughs> it was, but it's yeah, easy it's, it's... to fit in a bit of Charlie. I mean, it takes seconds, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like doing, putting your wedding photos in an album. You never get that. <laughs> A wall or put up a shell. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how he was given coke because, firstly, he's got to have been invited to a party, and secondly, <laughs> someone has to have been cruel enough to give him a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't look like he sniffed anything apart from his neighbour's knickers off the line. <laughs> But at the point where Michael Gove is worried that his political career will be ended by these revelations, <laughs> our general tone is, you didn't. Uh, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't. Like, you didn't. You didn't. Everything you did. So, therefore, it was all for nothing. <laughs> it was quite a revelation to me that I have less experience with illegal substances than Michael Gove. <laughs> <laughs> I have never felt more white in my life. <laughs> and I've been to a farmer's market to buy organic cider. <laughs> He's really worried, isn't he, about... Or at least people have said that he might not be allowed into America because he's done it. Yeah. So if he sends a delegation to America, the rest of them fly direct to Washington and he's going to be in Tijuana trying to get over the wall. <laughs> 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 and, and whilst he's there, he might pick up a bit of stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
I like that you said to try and get out of it, you said, but it was 20 years ago. Like, he was 31. That 20 years ago thing, like, doesn't work as you get older and older. Like, imagine the Queen saying, it was 20 years ago. <laughs> like, Liz, you were 73. Yes. <laughs> You've never been at that illegal rave. Yeah. <laughs> I think the biggest drugs revelation from the Tory party is that Theresa May wasn't pilled up when she did that dance. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of leaders have used drugs, and, uh, like, Hitler, he uh, sniffed marker pens. Uh... <laughs> 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 which other... Who else is who else is as in this? In Andrea Ledson, who's a headline. And it's a bizarre. It's amazing Andrea when Ledson. Andrea Ledson, and there was a headline, and went weed at university. You think, well, I hope she did. She was there for three years. <laughs> Jeremy Hunt, of course, admitted to having a cannabis lassie in India, uh, which is which he's admitted to taking drugs, but he's sticking within the broad Tory remit of blaming foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> cannabis lassie, or as he's better known, Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's oh. great. I just came up with that. I'm really happy with that. Uh, <laughs> the more you think about it, mudgy, mudgy, wah, 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 wah. Uh, yeah. The dog is definitely on cannabis. Who uh, took the opium? One of opium. Uh, Rory Stewart took the opium. Okay. Yeah, but it was, he, was, he didn't want to be impolite at a wedding. You know the way oh, well, when, when, when the opium goes round at a wedding, yeah, one doesn't want, want to, to you know, out. go, yeah. There's no it way he's opium. At, at, at the very best, he has the glassy stare of a glue sniffer at a betting shop. <laughs> And they're almost cliches. The first is, yes, it had no effect on me. Yes, I took it, but it had no, it had no effect yeah. on me. Yeah. They always had uh, none of these. Are, and you kind of wonder, how did the drugs catch on? Because they clearly <laughs> took the war. I mean, or why have they become so popular? <laughs> uh, given that they've had no, no effect. Like, you're just thinking, you're doing it wrong then. It's just a, yet another thing that you're inept at. Yeah. <laughs> Boris Johnson was the best. He, he's admitted to nearly taking cocaine, but sneezing at the last second <laughs> and blowing oh. the cocaine everywhere. Even when he tries to be edgy, he somehow ends up as Mr Bean. Well, I nearly uh, used a sex worker, but just at the last minute, I slipped and my head got stuck in a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Who was uh, Matt Hancock uh, also admitted uh, cannabis yep. use yeah. this week? Like, it's like but the really, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, but the, but the cannabis use can't have led to this design choice at his launch. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Because it, it, I, think it's, I think it's a reaction to Theresa May. Theresa May found it so difficult to, to, to admit to any kind of misbehaviour that now they're all trying to crowdsource the correct mm. amount of misbehaviour yeah, yeah, yeah. and go with, no, 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 cocaine, no, 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 cocaine, come back. <laughs> it now seems like the safe amount of misbehaviour to say 20 years ago. Do you think you someone's going to really overshoot it, like Dominic Raab's just going to go, I killed a boy! <laughs> <laughs> Podium, just yeah. finding a vein <laughs> and going, can we finally, can we finally have, have a mature... Oh. <laughs> OK, in other news, what scandals of dog labour this week? Well, there was, a, there was a guy called Peter Willsman, is that right? Yeah. Who was on the NEC and he's 76. And he was accused of um, sort of sexual harassment, of sending texts to a much younger woman saying things like, I'm in my pyjamas. <laughs> Sexy. Fortunately, he was so old he didn't know how to send a photo. So uh, <laughs> only good. I, I don't know the full I don't know the full tone of it, like whatever. But it does sound. I mean, it, there can't be any way in which this is an erotic thing to send no, to somebody. No, no. Go, That's I'm how you get out of sex. You go, oh, I've got my pajamas on. <laughs> <laughs> When you get over 70, that's, that's what sexting is. <laughs> Next it'll be, oh, I'm walking downstairs in my long nightshirt and funny hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding a candle. Holding a candle. Does that, does that make you oh, I'm just pouring out my whole legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slowly ascending the stairs of my stand up. <laughs> he didn't get... <laughs> yeah. I, sent you, I sent you a sound file of the engine of my stand up. Mm. <laughs> Now, I'm rubbing the vapour rub all over my chair. <laughs> I'm just filling up my hot water bottle. <laughs> what, what is a good Labour chat-up line in the first place? Do you say something like that, is that a communist manifesto in your pocket, or do you just have a weird square dick? <laughs> uh, OK, at the end of that round, the pause the Rachel Hewitt we play a round called Blow, Blow, Blow Your Vote. This game... 
involves Glenn Moore and Milton Jones. If you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is domestic life. Who wants to go? Glenn. I've got uh, two housemates, Sarah and Shalil. Uh, and it's not the Sarah and Shalil. I think a lot of people get excited when I say I lived with Sarah and Shalil. It's not the famous Sarah and Shalil you're probably thinking of. Um, I think a lot of people think I'm talking about Sarah and Shalil from AQA's 2007 GCSE maths exam question three. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, Shalil had five apples and Sarah took away three of them. It's not them. It'd be <laughs> mad if it was. No, I like my housemates, but the problem is they've got way better jobs than me and they always complain about those better jobs. Like, my housemate Sarah, she works at ITV, always complains about the fact she has to start work at 8am. Like, I argued if she hated it so much, she should just change department, work at ITV plus one, start at nine. <laughs> my housemate Shalil, on the other hand, has got a way better job than me and it really bothers me because he's a lot more stupid than me. Uh, to put this into context, up until last year he thought that the Rice Krispies characters were called Snap, Crackle and Paul, so he's a dick. <laughs> Housemates are always keeping me up late at night, always playing really loud music, always playing Dizzy Rascal, or to give him his real name, Elizabeth Rascal, and I can't <laughs> say that. But we're just different people. Like, they're into really energetic, high-octane activities, and I'm not. They like things like paintballing. I don't really enjoy paintballing. I've never really enjoyed the violence of paintballing. Uh, I prefer to sit in the trenches and write poetry about the horrors of paintballing. <laughs> Whereas they make fun of me for literally every activity I ever do. They once ripped the piss out of me because I queued up overnight to buy the final Harry Potter book because apparently it's been out for years. <laughs> <laughs> we got kicked out of our flat a few years ago and it was a nightmare. I remember saying goodbye to my housemates for the final time. I said goodbye at a train station and we all went our separate ways. Uh, Sarah departed Paddington on a train leaving at 65 miles an hour. Shalil departed one on... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just bad luck that I'd lived with people I didn't like. I'm an unlucky guy, I come from an unlucky family. Like my dad, for instance, unluckiest person I've ever met. Last year he was travelling in an Uber for the first time, fell asleep for one minute, got given one star. That is bad luck. <laughs> Uber said he was a bad driver, but that is bad luck. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan. <laughs> that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is parenthood. Away you go, Milton. I went back to my parents' house the other day, looked into my neighbour's garden where I used to steal apples as a toddler. They didn't mind me stealing apples, it was dressing up as a toddler they thought was weird. <laughs> I come from a family of auctioneers. There's my mum, my dad, my Uncle Philip, Auntie Eileen, <laughs> my dying grandfather, Going. <laughs> I said to my dad, I, I keep making mistakes. He said, you're talking to the wrong person. I said, oh, no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, it wasn't as bad as that Uber driver I had the other day. He fell asleep. <laughs> So Calvin Klein's mum has labelled everyone else's pants. <laughs> <laughs> when my daughter was born, she had jaundice, so there she was, small, round and uh, yellow. We called her Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I didn't even turn up to one of my own children's christenings, according to one of them, who shall remain nameless. <laughs> Is called. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board of six categories, Rachel, which category would you like? Um, I'll take a gamble on sport, please. All right, Grant, you're going to try sport. OK, the answer is about a million. What is the question? Is it how many emails do I get from Groupon every single day? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many times a month does my exaggeration club meet? <laughs> Is it, how many things have I got to do today? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never fit that coke in. No, I'm, uh... 
<laughs> Is it, since I was last on Mock the Week, how many tweets have I had about Love Island? <laughs> Have you slept with anyone yet? Have you slept with anyone on the island? Have I slept with anyone on the island, island yet? Yeah. yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm just going to own it now. Yeah, I'm on Love Island and I commute to do Mock the Week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you seen that Twitter account that's a mixture of you and the guy? Yes, of course. I've seen Curtis Gamble 12. <laughs> <laughs> so Is it making you cross? Is it making me cross? Oh, only in the sense that the moment I wake up every day until the moment I go to bed is just an onslaught of social media about me being on fucking Love Island. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got to have a niche. It's not my niche! <laughs> is it the prize money in the new game show Who Wants to Be Approximately a Millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> is it what Ransom does, like, quite a relaxed kidnapper ask for? <laughs> <laughs> Just whatever you can rustle up. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not picky about this, you know, like, just a couple of bags worth. <laughs> uh, uh... How many times has Diana Ross been phoned up by people trying to get Diana Rod? <laughs> <laughs> so, the notion that Diana Ross answers her own phone, <laughs> Diana Ross. Uh, <laughs> yes, Diana Ross. Yeah, yeah no, Diana. don't do drains, thank you. Uh, <laughs> is it how many people would my Uber driver have to mow down before I gave him anything less than five stars? <laughs> Dara? Yes? How many times have I told you not to do that? <laughs> Is it... <laughs> you, you, I'm in my pyjamas. <laughs> Is it how many times we can look forward to everyone mispronouncing Jeremy Hunt's name over the next year? Oh. <laughs> Is it when I have an evening to myself, how many steps does my watch say I've done? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many decibels does the fox below my window orgasm at? <laughs> <laughs> There's a real tone to it as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it's saying Ed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of you on Love Island. Ah! <laughs> Is it... What's getting me over the line here? <laughs> uh, does anyone know the correct answer? How many people have been buying tickets uh, for the Women's World Cup? Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Kerry Gardner. Yes, the question I was looking for was how many tickets have been sold so far for the FIFA Women's World Cup? This is the news that the tournament kicked off during a busy time for sports that also includes the football's Nations League and the Cricket World Cup as well. Now, have you been following any or all of this? Yeah, you? I've been singing three lionesses on the shirt S's. <laughs> 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 it's very early in the tournament, isn't it? We've only played one yeah. game, haven't we, against Scotland. We've got 6.1 million viewers, which is uh, great. When they, so, they're the Lionesses. Yes. Do, they change the, do they change the badge? Do they do it like Disney do and just put eyelashes on the lion? <laughs> <laughs> I used to go out with a girl years ago who did a great big green top and, and big gloves, and I took her home to see my mum, and she whispered to me, she's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> The women's manager, by the way, Phil Neville, been channeling Gareth Southgate. Who's Phil Neville? Phil Neville is, <laughs> Phil Neville is the manager of the, of the Lionesses. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And Gareth Southgate is the manager of the men's team. Is Phil Neville allowed in the dressing room for the halftime team talk, or does he have to be sort of like we're doing a really good job? <laughs> <half -time? laughs> Look, look me in the eye and tell me you can't do better. Okay, right. <laughs> really need to improve. That's quite right. Fact, actually, but... are you going to talk about loads of sport? No. Because oh. I've got a note. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, dear sir, please excuse Kerry from talking about PE. Unfortunately, she doesn't understand it. Thanks, <laughs> Mrs. Kerry Brackett, Kerry's mum. <laughs> May I? All right, Kerry, back to the hall. <laughs> 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 I can't really imagine a Phil Neville motivational talk to any extent. He's got all the authority of me going, can we all move down inside the train carriage, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in what way, though, is he ch channelling... Uh, is he wearing the... a waistcoat? A, like, oh, this is a man. And we go, oh, that's very similar, isn't it, to the waistcoat that famously Gareth Soko is wearing during last year's <laughs> World Cup. Uh, it is very similar. That's how... Wow. It's kind of weird, isn't it? <laughs> That's what it's like when you go bloke shopping. Yeah. It's all like that. Kerry, 
Look around. <laughs> <laughs> I look like the opposite of that. Yeah. Like, the, the, the you polar look, inverse. You look like a graphic designer on the way to a funeral. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it would be nice if we stopped focusing on what the men are wearing and actually mm. maybe listen to them for a change. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't be dressing like that if they didn't want us to look at them, all right? <laughs> Just look at the... They know we're looking. They know we're looking! I suppose you think a waistcoat is provocative. Oh, uh, you're saying it's a bit saucy. <laughs> it goes in and out in the right places. Let's see arms. They, they are wearing that waistcoat for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but where's that tie pointing? Yeah. <laughs> they know what they're doing. Saucy minxes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it feels good to objectify Phil Neville. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, what did someone find in their punnet of raspberries at a Sainsbury's in Basildon this week? A lizard. A lizard! A gecko! A, a tiny gecko. lizard was found. Look, oh. there he is. Oh, I love gecko's hands. Yeah. They're great, aren't they? They're talk They're really... Jazz uh... hands. <laughs> <laughs> he's, going, he's going, I'm the lucky one, really. My brother's in the jam. <laughs> Somewhere, there's a mob boss telling his henchmen, you need to make the warnings less weird. <laughs> yeah, that's like yeah. a Sainsbury's really pushing their taste the difference rate. <laughs> <laughs> I think the headline in the Daily Mail was, illegal immigrant found stowed in potential British coolie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that scene in Titanic where Jack and Rose have sex <laughs> in the car. <laughs> It's like a gecko stag do. Oh, right, hang on, so the other geckos look, look, stuck them in, stuck them yeah, in. Yeah, they're like, like Gary in the punnet. Where are Gary's now? <laughs> I mean, it does feel like that they should. I mean, if, in that situation, would you ask would you, for help or would you just go, magic, a gecko? Yeah, uh, a gecko, must be, gecko, a you... gecko must be about 30 or 40 quid. I mean, you know, it's got to be a punnet of raspberries, three quid tops. I mean, you're totally coming up with it. Come out with Sell a gecko. It. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. And you, but you, if, well, you know if you alert the staff, they're going to take the gecko you're off. You're like, you. no, there isn't an unexpected item well, in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally, it is literally the situation for which that phrase was, was invented. <laughs> <Totally>. yeah. <laughs> There's a gecko in the baggie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he is one of the ingredients of a black forest gecko? <laughs> Sometimes I surprise <laughs> even myself. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry, under her breath, just went, masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, again, that round of applause for the game, Kerry. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, <laughs> here we go. The first subject is unlikely things for a sports commentator to say. Wimbledon, day three. Still not seen one fucking womble. <laughs> pass, 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 another pass. Sorry, I'm on Tinder. <laughs> Welcome to coverage of the first ever Willy Wonka Olympics officiated by the umpire, the lumpire, and the dumpity dumpire. <laughs> Oh, and that's some excellent curling. I have never seen a dog take a shit like that before. <laughs> and that was 9.6 seconds! <laughs> Sorry, darling. <laughs> <laughs> there is Hamilton. Hamilton is driving at 180 miles an hour. This is not the musical I expected. <laughs> Welcome to the Tour de France, presented by Francis de la Tour de France. <laughs> <laughs> and now it is just Mo Farah against the clock, which doesn't seem fair. It doesn't even have legs. Mm. It is just <laughs> the clock. <laughs> and he's gone down in the box. Fair enough, here's her birthday. <laughs> Well, after arriving at the wrong nation, England believe they have now arrived at the correct one. They think it's Moldova. It is now. <laughs> and welcome to our 
fifth day at the Oval today. <laughs> Don't it go on. <laughs> and that's a clean entry, very little splashing and a lovely flick at the end. This really is the most impressive urine sample I've ever witnessed. <laughs> Well, you have to hand it to relay runners, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the parachute has failed to open at 300 metres, and you can't make mistakes like that at this level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the campest Grand National I've ever seen. Oh, sorry, it's the dressage. <laughs> Has that crossed the line? She's calling HR, so I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he scored! What a weekend Michael Gove is going to have. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... On likely lines from a romantic novel. I know I promised you fellatio for your birthday, she said, but they didn't have any, so I got some vermicelli. <laughs> Ever since our night of passion, I've burned for you, she said. Desire, he asked. No, cystitis, she said. <laughs> Turn the light off, she said. <laughs> what about all the boats, said the lighthouse keeper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the most sexually minded man. George told her, and I know that the average man supposedly thinks about sex every dick sucking. Six seconds. <laughs> Be mine. Had she heard right? No, he said. B minus. This essay is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Anastasia Steele stood in front of Christian Grey dressed as a mummy. Oh, I'm sorry, she said. I thought you said you were into bandage. <laughs> She'd never forget his first words to her. Cheer up, love, might never happen. <laughs> <laughs> he gasped as her hair cascaded down. Well, it was February, who waxes in winter? <laughs> <laughs> Carry me upstairs, she said. I'd rather not, said the lighthouse keeper. <laughs> Simon sidled across the nightclub floor and used the one chat-up line he knew always worked. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Lucifer! <laughs> <laughs> he was literally perfect in every way, as far as she could tell from the dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> he took off her top and did what makes all the girls go crazy. Honk, honk! <laughs> I wish I knew how to quit you, said Michael, honking another massive line of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Our relationship is on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's inevitable, said the lighthouse keeper. <laughs> She felt the stranger's hand slide round from behind and gently cup her breasts. She's a double 38 G! <laughs> We're gonna need the mega cut! <laughs> I am with child, she said. Yeah, but you're not actually a child, so it's still full fair. <laughs> He stood before her almost naked and slowly reached down. No, she whispered. Leave your socks on. <laughs> <laughs> Molly was stunned as she reached into the bucket of popcorn next to her and grasped a big handful of her boyfriend's penis. <laughs> After all, she'd gone to the cinema alone. <laughs> 
At that moment, she knew with butterflies in her stomach that she was banned from the London Zoo Butterfly House. At the end of that, the boys win again. Carry it on! This week's winners are Ed Gamble, Terry Gardner, and Glenn Wood. <laughs> Commiserations to Milton Jones, Hugh Dennis, and Rachel Parrish. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darwin. Good night. <laughs> Well, what would Malcolm Tucker make of the news? Watch your full series of The Thick of It on BBC iPlayer now. And Ramesh reviews the big stories of the week, and he's not alone. The Rankin Nation, Sunday night at nine here on BBC Two. And catch last weekend's episode at quarter past 11, straight after news night, next. <laughs>